All right, folks. So today we're taking a look at a new product. It is a charge controller from Red Odo. You can see it's 40 amp and an MPPT charge controller, not one of the PWM charge controllers. So that's actually a really good thing. And we're excited about testing this. It came shipped just in this box with a big old sticker right here that said to the smoke and eight. Uh, I was contacted by Red Odo and they asked if I would review this product and I said yes. So they sent this to me free of charge in exchange for this video review. Now, if you're the type of person who gets triggered by sponsored videos on YouTube, I'd suggest you go watch some cat videos. Okay, so now that we're back and we've gotten through that, let's open this box up and see what's doing in here. And looks like we got some packing material. It looks like we got some hardware. We'll take a look at this in a second. Instruction manual, we're going to take a look at that. And then, what is this? This looks like it is installation steps for using the mounting brackets. And it looks like this is a template that you actually use uh, if you're going to mount this thing to a wall or a board or something like that. So that's pretty cool. This, um, let's see if we can get this in the screen. Let me just take it out of the box. This thing is big. It's beefy. Okay, we're back. Uh, in the box was this, and this looks to me to be like a temperature probe. And so I would imagine this plugs in here somehow and then use that probe to connect to your battery and to make sure that you are not charging or discharging in dangerous temperatures. Okay, and we're back. And uh, this has a screen here, which is nice. So it displays information. You have some indicator lights here. I'm not entirely sure what each one of these do. I'd imagine this one at the bottom is a warning. We'll figure that out as we go. Uh, this seems to have like a rubberized coating on it for protection. You can see right here, we have some screw block terminals. We'll take a closer look at these, but this one is for your solar panel. This one is for your battery. And then this one is for your load. We'll take a look at the instruction manual and see what recommendations are for setting this up. But a lot of times you'll see these set up where solar panels come in. This connects to the battery. So juice comes in and it gets the magic happens. Oh, we got some buttons here too. And then the, um, energy comes out through and into the battery. Now, some folks will connect their load directly to the battery. Some folks will connect it directly here to this load port. Uh, you can see those screws there, which would open and close these jaws that we have here. So this is how your wires connect in. This is an RS-485 connector, and this is probably for some type of control unit. It's probably an additional add-on or buy. I don't have that. Um, here's where your temperature probe plugs in. And then you can see this really large heat sink on the bottom. And this is to keep things cool. So when you mount this somewhere, you want to make sure that you do have some airflow. And you typically would mount these vertically um, like this, actually. You would mount it this direction. And the reason that you would do that is, is that the air can rise. Heat rises, right? So it comes up through these heat sinks and then dissipates. There's not a whole, mo whole much more to talk about right here. So what I'm going to do is take a look at the instruction manual and take a look at how we're going to connect this up. I do want to connect us to some solar panels during this video review. Uh, today is pretty cloudy outside, so I don't know if we're going to get to that today. We'll probably have to shoot that part tomorrow or the next day and then edit everything together. But uh, let me take a look at the instruction manual and uh, see what we're going to do. Okay, and we're back. So one of the things that we've done since uh, the last segment was is I made these pigtail connectors and they have Anderson power poles. And then I have them double heat shrinked here for stability and rigidity. The reason I use these is because for this video, I wanted to be able to quickly connect and test things. So one of the things I've got a mess going on over here that we're going to do is we're going to use this cable and I can just plug the power poles in. And it's no problem. This is eight gauge wire. This is going into 10 gauge wire, which should be fine or sufficient for this particular video. And what we do is, is that we use these ferrule connectors here at the ends to plug into these jaw connectors that we took a look at earlier. So PV is for your photovoltaic. Here we go. I've got a little bit of a zoom problem. So it's my solar panel battery and load. And what you do when you hook one of these up is, is that you hook your battery up first and that will power up the unit. And then we're going to hook our solar panel up. When we hook our solar panel up, that will allow energy to flow into the battery. You don't want to hook up your solar panel first. Um, also, it's a good idea to have a control switch between your solar panel and your charger. It's also a good idea to have fuse protection between this device and your battery. 
So for this particular video, the battery that we're going to use is one I've done a review on, and it is a Redodo uh, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. So let me get this set up, plugged in here, and then uh, we'll see what's doing. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to plug the controller into the battery. We're plugged in, and then we have some action over here. And it's looking like it's reading our battery at around 13.3 volts, which is about right because I've been using this battery and it's not fully charged. Now, there's a couple of things I want to do is I want to go through these settings here and make sure that everything is set up correctly. It is showing or indicating that my battery is connected and that we are on a 12 volt system. You can also see the battery icon here. And so I'm not 100 percent sure what, <laughs> what these settings are going to do. But let's go ahead and switch through them. And here you can see the battery icon has a light next to it showing that it is, it is connected and it is powered up. And let me go ahead and hit this button. And there we go. Here's where you can set your battery type. Right now it's set for lithium ion. I can circle through this. This is a gel battery. This would be a sealed lead acid battery, flooded lead acid battery, and use. I'm not 100% sure what that is. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to leave it on lithium iron battery. I'm going to hit the back button. And there we go. And I'll tell you what, let's check and see if we have any output voltage right now on the load side. Let me grab a multimeter real quick and let's take a look. Okay, so we're connected up. And what I did is, is I clicked through these settings. And here's something for our solar panel. Let's go ahead and take a look. This would be battery and load. And if I hit this button it turns the load on also i think i can switch through here to read it's set for 15 volts out i think is what that says so let me go ahead and connect this up and see what we get oh we're getting 13.5 so maybe 15 is a cutoff or a maximum on that our battery is around 13.35 so that seems to be right and what i did is i just connected another set of pigtails up to the load side so we can test that mm -hmm. All right, well, we're making progress. I think what I want to do now is I actually want to go out and get my solar panel cable and I want to run it in through the, the window here. And I want to connect that up to the solar panel port. And then that way we can see the entire thing in use. Now I can turn this off. So now it's just reading the battery. Um, I think that when your battery is connected, it's always on unless you have a control switch somewhere. I have not found a setting to turn that particular thing on or off. So we're just going to leave it like that. Let me go get the cable and set that up and we'll be right back. This cable is a marine grade outdoor cable and it's about 25 feet long. So we do get some loss through this cable as it comes in. But this cable is actually really nice and uh, it works really well for outdoor applications. So what I wanted to do real quick is I just wanted to check the voltage coming in off the solar panel right now. And I'll roll a picture in so you can see how I connected the panel to the cable. And you'll be able to see the panel itself. And there you see a nominal voltage of 23 volts. All right, let's get this connected to our controller. Okay, we're plugged in and I said nominal voltage and I think what I meant to say is an open voltage. So, okay, so what I've done is, is I've connected another pigtail up here to our PV or solar panel port. We have everything turned on, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug the cable in. Don't mind that noise. All right, once I plugged it in, let me see, let me get it in here good. You can see that uh, we have a light up here next to our solar panel icon. And then over here, you can see that we are getting juice from the panel into the battery and out to the load. And that's a pretty good thing. Um, I wonder what we can do to manage the, or monitor the status on here. So let me just click through here and see if there's something we can see. Okay, so what we're seeing is we're getting around 18 volts off of the panel. And this is the load watt hours. And we're getting an operating temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. And I'm not seeing anything coming in here off of the panel yet. And it says watt hours. Here we go. 
it looks like we're getting somewhere around six amps off of the solar panel, which is cool. And it's about what I expected. Uh, when I did this test outside, it's a hundred watt solar panel, uh, before with a different cable, I think it was around somewhere around seven. So to me, this is about what is expected. What I want to do now is I want to set up a little bit of a load and I want to put the load on the system and see what we get. In order to do the load test on this, we're going to connect this West Mountain CBA uh, 4 battery analyzer up and we're going to put a little bit of a load on here and see what happens. So let me get this set up and we'll be right back. Okay, so we have the West Mountain radio load set up right now. And uh, what you can see, if you look in the upper right hand corner for our test, our live data is showing that the battery or the load is now at around 12.65 or 12.64. And you can see that what we're consuming and we're running this test at 10 amps of draw. And uh, that's going to run for a little while. We're not going to let it run for very long because we're just testing. <clears throat> we're not doing a capacity test or anything like that. But I did want to show that this is under load right now. Let's go back and take a look at our setup. And then here you can see the West Mountain Radio CBA is right here and it's connected. And solar. that's showing 17 volts right now coming off of the solar panel. I wanna get a little bit of a better look as to what's going on here. And fortunately for me, there is a Bluetooth app. So let me get my phone out and we'll take a look at the Bluetooth app and see if we can find out any more data. Okay, here you can see the Bluetooth app and it was super easy to connect. I just hit this Bluetooth icon and it gave me a list. And one of the things that I could connect to was this charge controller. So I did that. And now we can see our real time monitoring. And when I click on here, you can see that it's saying the battery is at 13.1 volts. Our PV input is 17.8 and it is in the MPPT status. Taking a look at the battery bank, it's saying um, there's a current of 16, I'm sorry, 6.3 amps. I'm assuming that's coming in from the, from the panel into the battery. Here's a voltage reading down here, and we've consumed 83 watts at this point in time. If we take a look at our DC load, uh, it's showing that the current coming out is 9.6, 9.58 amps, voltage of 3.1 and a power of 125 watts. And I'm assuming that is the continuous draw. And then down here is some other data. It just shows our highest, our lowest voltage and things along those lines. If I click on historical data, I can get a real time data output. Let me zoom in a little bit more and see what, what we can do. There we go, it looks a little better. So you can see um, the historical data, as I was mentioning. And then if I take a look at my parameter settings in here, you can see right now it's locked and I don't want to mess with anything while it's turned on, but our system voltage is set for 12 volts. Our battery bank is lithium. And then for advanced, you can see our boost charge voltage, our over discharge reconnect voltage, over discharge uh, disconnect voltage, and then light control delay time and light control voltage. I'm not sure what those light control voltages are. But this is pretty easy to set up. Uh, it wasn't complex or anything along those lines. And I'm pretty happy with this because the controller that I've been using, I'm not entirely happy with. So this is going to replace the uh, controller in my solar system. Once the solar system's all done and upgraded, uh, I'll do a video on that so you can see what's going on there. Let me get this out of the way. Let's go back and take a look at our window capture. And let me turn that on. And then you can see the discharge test. Um, here's, this is our voltage uh, over time. And you can see it's continuing to put a draw or a load on this. So we're, we're pretty happy. Uh, I like this. Now, one of the things I probably would do is let me go ahead and turn this off and we can take a look at the output here. Um, I'll probably leave a load connected to this at all times, but I will run an inverter off of the battery directly. This load is only about uh, 20 amps draw, I think is what it was. We'll take a look at the manual in a second so we can determine. But when um, we're talking about 20 amps worth of draw, that's not a lot of power for the things that I typically would run. So I'll connect an inverter directly to the battery and I'll use the controller itself to keep the battery charged off of solar power, which is fantastic. So I'll be able to have a solar powered, uh, this is a ham shack, I'm a ham radio operator. And we'll be able to use this for the bulk of our energy, which is fantastic. Let's take a look at the manual and see what we have. Okay, we're back and let's take a quick look at the product manual. And you can see 40 amp hour solar charge controller, solar charge and discharge controller. <clears throat> so here are some specifications and it says 
rated load current 20 amps. And so I mentioned that earlier in the video. And so that's why I'm only going to put small loads on this thing, like maybe a monitor, maybe a light, something along those lines, but I'm not going to hook my inverter up because I typically draw more than 20 amps for my battery. And this says max solar panel uh, system input power, 600 watts for 12 volts, 1200 watts for 24 volts. And uh, we're well below that right now. And there's some safety instructions and you want to be safe and you want to read all this stuff and make sure you understand what you're doing. Um, talks a little bit about some of the additional components, like some of the hardware. We're going to take a look at that. Um, and then it has this mounting guide and I showed that already. And here is operation. And so it tells you how to operate this Bluetooth installation. Some specifications. Let's go through. This is the mounting instructions this is connecting everything up and it has you connecting the battery first here's some wire recommendations let me zoom in a little bit so here you can see some wire recommendations and we're using 10 amp uh, or 10 awg um, 10 gauge wire american wire gauge to the load and this is our max wire gauge is seven for the solar panel to battery we're using uh, i believe it's 10 and it comes in and switches to eight all of the pigtails that we have going into the device are eight and here is some fuse recommendation stuff i'd encourage you to read that and make sure that you're being safe here are some operation in the uh, interface i think we figured all this stuff out um, here's how you can switch some of the display information Let's see, this is a pretty good manual. Um, it's very thorough, and the English in it is pretty good. So uh, thanks to Red Odo for doing that. Maybe it's Red Odeo, I'm not 100% sure. But as with their batteries, their documentation is really good. And then here's some information on programming your system voltage, programming your load, Bluetooth operation. And here is some information on the app and how to use that. And some more specifications. And I don't think there's anything in here that is going to be surprising to us. You can pause this and take a look at it if you want. And some troubleshooting steps at the end of it. But uh, we didn't need to do that. So in addition to the instruction manual and this uh, temperature probe, it came with this bag of hardware. So let's take a look and see what we have in here. I didn't need to use my razor blade. I spoke too soon. And so we have everything packaged up in this little bag, which is pretty handy. Let's go ahead and open this. So we have these mounting brackets and you would use these to mount these to a wall, floorboard, something like that. Um, I'm going to use a piece of plywood board to put this on. And then we have some, these look like battery terminal lugs. So that was nice of them to give us some extras of those. We can always use those. These are M8 bolts with a lock washer, which is fantastic. It looks like we have some wood screws for mounting this to whatever we use. And then we have these expansion plugs. So you would drill this into whatever medium you're mounting this to, put screws in, and they would expand. We got some heat shrink for making those cables, but I use some stuff from a private stash for the pigtails. And then we have, these are actually pretty nice. Instead of using ferrules, you can use these. So you would just put your wire in here, crimp and solder it, and then you would stick this into those jacks and screw down. And you would get a very nice, you would get a very nice connection on that. So we'll probably switch over to that. I should have probably looked inside this bag before I made those pigtails. But uh, that's it from a hardware standpoint. Thanks to them for sending that. All right, folks, that's going to wrap up this video. Uh, so far, I'm really happy with this product. I'll have a link below with a code that you can use to get a little bit of a discount. But uh, before we close out, I did want to say thank you to Red Audio for sending this to me for my consideration. And thanks to everybody for watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching.